So, what exactly are you doing? So, the big issue with a Subaru in rear wheel drive swapping it is the rear diff and the rear axles. Um, on the Legacy GTT, the litigator, I busted an axle, just like sheared it in half. And so, to be able to drift it without worrying, I'm just upgrading this rear differential, which is the gear that takes the rotation from the engine and turns it to the rotation this way. I'm upgrading that to what's in a Ford Explorer and using the Ford Explorer axles, which the Subaru axles are about this big, a little bit bigger in diameter than this one. And the Explorer axles literally are this big. Oh, okay. So there's no way they're gonna break. And I can get Explorer axles at the junkyard for $17. And if I was to buy upgraded Subaru axles, they're like 400 for two. Whoa. And the, it would still be questionable if they would take the power. But then you still have the limiting factor of this di differential. And so uh, I'm going to retrofit the Ford rear differential into the Subaru subframe using the stock Ford Explorer axles. And to do that, I'm gonna have to basically make a whole new custom knuckle. And so I'm using rear brakes from a 2015 Ford Mustang and a wheel bearing from a Honda NSX, which is the Honda Supercar. On, on this body style, the rear knuckle is one piece with the trailing arm. And so I'm building a custom trailing arm knuckle that will be able to mount to all of the stock Subaru um, suspension components and I'm gonna have to offset it because the Explorer axles are like an inch or two wider or longer and so it'll push it out a little bit farther but uh, there's a lot of space on the body so I can still fit a tire underneath it. I'm hoping that it'll look stock from the outside and you won't be able to tell until I get on track. The cool thing, I guess the big thing, the reason why I'm doing it this way First, it's cheap. Like I got the rear diff for 75 bucks. I get axles for 17 bucks. Yeah, it's a lot of custom fab on my end. Um, but once it's there and I'm finished with it, it has like unlimited potential for power handling. So I can do whatever I want on that end of the car and I won't ever have to worry about the rear end again. So maybe at some point I'll put a V8 in this. That'd be fun. That'd be a lot of power. That'd be great. I was just loosening all the bolts that I could while it's still attached to the car where I have leverage. Um, so just breaking all of these that are like kind of rusty. Mm. And then uh, I just, the subframe is only four bolts or six bolts basically that are huge. So what, what exactly is the subframe? The subframe is what bolts, what of these suspension arms, and everything bolts to the, to the subframe, subframe, which bolts to the body. Gotcha. And so I'm taking off the whole back half of the car, basically. But not the body. All, all of the suspension components will come off with six bolts. Because it all drops down together. Hmm. It's pretty cool. And it will be nice because this subframe is starting to get some surface rust on it. And so I'm going to be able to clean it up and make it not ever rust again. So... And this is a different style than what's on like a Forester or the Litigator's rear subframe. Totally different. Hmm. So this is different suspension. Yeah, it should be good. It's going to take a lot of fab work, but I have basic tools I need to do it. And so it's not going to be that big of an issue. It'll take yeah. time, but that's what I have right now. Yeah. I like that it's cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, me too. There are better ways to do this than the way I'm doing it, but they're all more expensive, and so... Gotta keep it dirt cheap. Yeah, when I have almost unlimited time and very limited financial resources, this is what you do. Yep.
Otherwise, I'd just go buy a BMW and call it good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So I would assume that most of you watching are really wondering why the heck I'm doing this. Why are you converting a perfectly good Subaru to rear wheel drive? And frankly, why don't you just go buy a BMW or Nissan? And I don't know why. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the way I'm doing it. I don't know. I'm kind of crazy, I guess. This can be done, and I want to do it. It's a project I've been planning for a really long time, or at least dreaming about. I've only actually got down to the real plans in the last few months. But I think it's gonna be worth it in the end. How cool will it be to have a third gen legacy wagon drifting competently and then be able to just go drive it around normal and have it look just like any other third gen out there. Nobody's gonna think anything of it. And then I'll get on track and roast some tires off. It honestly would be cheaper and easier to start with a rear wheel drive chassis. The only thing that makes me not want to do that though is that it wouldn't be a Subaru. How's it going? Hey. Good. So, I just got some parts for the knuckles. These are uh, weld on bushing, so just the bushing itself. That goes through there. And then, basically, since I'm making this piece myself, these are going to take the place of that. And so, those just came. They're sweet. Anyway, um, this though, just positioning the Ford pumpkin in the subframe. Uh, Is it going to fit? Yeah, it's definitely going to fit. Before I cut some things off, it was looking really tight, but I cut the 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 horns, I guess you'd say, the, the original mounting points off of the pumpkin cover, uh, and then I was able to actually get it down in. Yeah, those are the chunks over there. Cut off horns. Yep. Um, and so with those cut off, it does fit. And then I cut out right here, the uh, original mounting point for the Subaru diff, just to be able to get some space. Cause this has to get pushed back farther than what I could put those there. So that'll get plated, <clears throat> weld that in. Um, and so basically I'm just fitting it. The things that you have to consider is like all the axes. So the position it is, this way, the position it is this way, and the position it is up and down. The big thing is the axle outputs. You want them lined up as close as you can straight out so they're not like bent back all the time. And then you want it centered. When I do all my stuff on the outside, my, actual, my axles aren't like poking out. And then height, so a lot of that is just gonna be what works best as far as uh, clearance of the axles. I've got everything clearanced for it to be able to move in and out and up and down as far as I need to. Um, and side to side I guess, but side to side is a um, The big thing I'm working with is uh, where the axle, the CV cups, have potential to contact these supports in the cross member down here, the underside. I think I'm in a good place as far as that goes though. I should only have minimal trimming that I'll be able to reinforce when I'm done. Um, but yeah, other than that, I just need to go and buy some metal so I can actually start fabbing it up. Since I cut off those horns, um, I'm gonna be mounting the pumpkin at the rear, I'm gonna be mounting it with these top three bolts. And so I'm gonna make basically a little girdle where those bolts will go on and they'll bolt the girdle to it and then that girdle will be able to bolt to the subframe. The front is uh, pretty cool on the Legacy. If I can find my stuff. So on uh, like a Forester or Impreza subframe, uh, the way they mount the front of the, the diff 
they have like another mini subframe that comes forward. It's kind of weird. On this one, it's really cool and compact. Basically, you have these two bushings and they just kind of go up and mount it. And I'm probably gonna just hard mount it, so no bushings. So I have to do that, keeping it positioned where I want it, basically. And so that's fairly straightforward as far as the subframe goes. It should be pretty good. Here you can see the difference between the Explorer axle and the Subaru axle. And uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, the Explorer is way bigger. Yeah, the Explorer is like an inch and a half. And the Subaru is uh, like seven eighths. So this is what I snapped. I just sheared off right at the, the splines on the Legacy GTT, the litigator. And that was with just a 2.5 turbo. And so big power, these just snap. And then you snap this guy. And so that's why I'm doing the whole upgrade. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't break this ever. It'll be great. And it's 17 bucks. Winnie. Hey Winnie, come here. Come here. Inside. Dirt cheap doggo. When I had it sitting out here the other day with the pumpkin just resting on top of it, I was like, this is going to be a lot of work to get it to fit. Luckily, it's not as much work. I'm curious to see what it sounds like with no exhaust. So, just for kicks. Sounds nasty. <laughs> so not to go on that route.